Hi everyone, this is Megan or Stitching Moon and today I'm going to do a floss tube extra. My second floss tube extra on the Nora Corbett Zodiac Girls, the last six patterns and also a little astrology chat to go along with it. And this is not like my normal floss tube so I won't be doing my whip updates or anything like that. So it's just um, talking about the patterns and a little bit about astrology um, because why not? It's fun. And it's my second one. I did a part one uh, several months ago, so I'll link that below. But that one goes over the first six signs. So if you want to check that out, I recommend it. Also because I do an intro in that one that I'm not going to do here. So that one I talk about um, an overview kind of basic stuff in astrology and the birth chart and I give a lot of background on that um, and how you can how everybody has um, the signs all represented throughout their chart so even if your sun sign is one of these um, signs it doesn't mean that's everything you have we have a lot of interactions a lot of things happening depending on our birth chart so um, just keep in mind if you know you're looking at your sign there's so many other things at play depending on what your birth chart looks like um so yeah definitely check that out uh i go into a lot of that and this one might be not quite as put together as my first one and i'd wanted to do this like in december when i got the patterns but you know things have just been crazy and i haven't had time to prepare or i've just wanted to stitch instead so i finally just i'm like okay i need to put the second one together for the final six signs so bear with me today. I'm going to be looking at my notes a lot. And yeah, this one is going to be on Libra, Scorpio, uh, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. So with that, uh, yeah, we can get started. I do want to mention also at first, I'm not an expert on this. It's just one of my interests. And this is all... Um, just my opinions on the pattern and what might be represented there but not I don't know what they actually meant um what the artist actually meant to represent so this is just my personal opinion and what else do I want to say yeah so just a little quick recap is the signs can be thought of as symbol for like a cycle like if you think of the seasons um they are kind of going through a cycle where one kind of builds on the other you can think of it like that and often it represents the months that um that that the sun is in that sign so starting off with uh the early early spring with aries and then it kind of goes through all the summer which we've been through and now we're in getting into the fall and winter in these signs so let's get started uh the first one we'll do is libra so I'll, I'll briefly show you the pattern and then talk about the sign and then I'll show you the pattern again as we go into like what might be represented in that pattern. So this is the Libra chart. And um, I also talk about uh, the elements that they are, which again is more explained in my first video. But the birth dates for the sun in Libra is September 23rd to October 22nd. Um, Libra is an air sign and also a cardinal sign and cardinal means they're an initiative sign and they like to take action and make things happen. Um, they're, re they're represented by the scales. Uh, the archetypes for Libra are, uh, okay, I told you my notes are <laughs> kind of all over the place. So where, where we got that? The lover, the artist, and the peacemaker. Um, now, one other note <laughs> to get us going into these is keep in mind that the viewpoint of the type of astrology that I like to look at is evolutionary astrology. So it's not saying this is how you are or how this sign is and it stays like that. It's more what we're here to evolve into and what our challenges might be. So it's not even that we are our <laughs> the signs yet. It's more like we're trying to become the highest version of that sign. So the Libra really is trying to transform consciousness in a way that nothing can break that inner balance and their emotional peace. 
So their end point is really, no matter what's happening around them, all the chaos, they really are meant to find an inner balance and stability to keep them calm and yeah, in peace. Now this doesn't always come easy to eat Libra. It can really take a lot of effort. So that's what they're aiming for, but it doesn't mean it comes easy. So they need to learn to stay calm even when they're the most vulnerable. And, and it can help them to just try and become aware of that emotional imbalance before, you know, as it's coming up and before they're in the thick of it, because they tend, can tend to react quickly if that happens. So this is one reason why Libra is very drawn, drawn to beauty and aesthetics, and they really like to have a calm, peaceful, um, beautiful environment, whatever that looks like to them, because that's very calming for Libra. Now, relationships like marriages and friendships are super important to Libra, and it doesn't always mean that the relationships can come easy. It can often be a source of their growth, um, and it can even be, you know, turbulent at times because they're learning all these things, but um, relationships are super central to Libra. Uh, let's see. They can also be very diplomatic. Um, they they are the peacemaker, so they can see all sides to many different issues and uh, they want to kind of balance those together. So they can see that you need both the light and the dark so to make a whole. So they're very tolerant of a paradox. They, they see that and they're like, yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> so because of this though, they can be very indecisive, which is one of the uh, stereotypes for Libra. And that can happen because they see all the options and they don't, whenever you make a decision, you're basically cutting off another option and they really don't like to do that. They want to keep all their options open so it can make decisions hard and then they can become stuck and not wanting to make that decision. So let's see, let's look at her chart again and see just some of the things that I just talked about, maybe represented in there. So her, the sign or the glyph for Libra is this right here. She obviously has scales represented there attached to her hair, kind of balancing her out. And she does look very balanced in her posture and stable and just, yeah, very straight up and down, seeing both sides. And uh, she looks like she's at peace and you know, there's a bunch of stuff flying around her, which is, you know, decoration. But even in the midst of that chaos, she's kind of calm and centered and balanced. Let's see. She also looks maybe a little stuck because her arms are kind of by her side. And that can happen again if they're, if they're not willing to make a decision or it's hard for them. So that you could represent it that or see it that way as well. So I'll just bring it up closer. All right, so yeah, that's Libra. And next, okay, I've got some two different places here. Next, we go on to Scorpio. And the birth dates for Scorpio is October 23rd to November 21st. And I'll show it quick. Here's her pattern. So Scorpio is a water sign and also a fixed sign, which means they can really be focused and stay on one thing. They can be um, also stubborn sometimes, but very kind of set on an ability to focus on one thing and also pretty loyal. The scorpion represents Scorpio. Um, their archetypes are the detective, the sorcerer, and the hypnotist. So... Scorpio is really here to live every moment like it's their last and uh, they are trying to be in the present moment because they really have this desire or draw to look at death and mortality and face that we're all gonna die someday we all have an end and this life is temporary so they're really trying to live in this moment and make that the best they can um, they really tend to base their actions on their feelings and emotions, which they have a ton of as a water sign, versus relying on their reason or making decisions based on reason. So 
they have to have the courage to feel all the feelings, no matter how hard that is or how scary that might be, because it can get pretty scary when they're so drawn to that, like, death mortality um, and the reality of that, and no matter what that means for their life. They, they really need to find what's actually important to them so that they can live their life to the fullest. So often Scorpio is thought, thought of as the sexy sign, um, but it's more like from a need for intense emotional experience and sensuality versus like a physical desire. Um, really they need to just let their sexuality be what it is, not try to fix it or change it and just let it be. So Scorpio is probably the sign that can, can't stop their inner self-analysis and deep self-analysis. They really like to go deep in there. Um, and that can really lead to and bring out those intense emotions and feelings. And they really can be brutally honest with themselves. Now their challenge can be, they can go too deep and get stuck in that rabbit hole and keep going and going and going. Um, and then they can brood in their emotions. They can, um, let's see, they can, if that happens, they can let their anxiety, they can really build anxiety by going too deep and just like in a never ending cycle, trying to like figure themselves out and figure others out. And that can lead to anxieties kind of attaching to other things that aren't, you know, really what's important. Um, so that could be anything like, because they have this intense focus, they can really turn that into maybe perfecting like a clean house, super clean house all the time, or it can be finding the perfect diet, or it can be um, chasing after money or power or control, because they have this need to have th this intensity that they have to channel somewhere. So sometimes instead of living their life to the fullest, it can be put into these narrow channels. Um, so yeah, they really need to just kind of not brood over those feelings and let them be what they are and just feel them. Don't try to fix them. Just let them be there. All right, so pattern wise, let's see. So you can see she's in a sexy pose. She's showing the most skin out of all the signs. Um, so that represents that sensuality. She, so her eyes, like it's a very seductive look, but it could also be a piercing gaze, like just kind of, and also suspicious because Scorpio can be suspicious. Um, they kind of like are like, oh, what's their motive? <laughs> and try to figure out which is why they're good detectives. Uh, but so it could be, you know, you could represent it as a, or look at it as she's kind of piercing into your soul, you know, just like trying to figure out your motives. Um, it could also be like, I don't know if her eyes are squinting or just closed. So closed, she could be kind of, again, looking into that deep inner self and trying to analyze what's going on there. So her hair obviously is a scorpion tail. She's got the glyph for Scorpio right here. And she's holding on to something, kind of clinging tight to it, which is pretty Scorpio. Scorpios can be pretty possessive um, and clinging to that. So whatever they attach to. So that could be represented there. So yeah, that is Scorpio. I'm working on this one right now. So if you see in my regular updates, you'll see um, progress on that. All right, next is Sagittarius. It's funny, I have so many of the end, like all these last six signs, so many of these signs are people like in my life, my whole family, I have like, it's funny, my tangent here. <laughs> my dad and my stepmom are Libras, my mom and um, her husband are Capricorn, my husband's Capricorn, my sister's Sagittarius, and I'm Scorpio. So it's like we're all, we're all in this part of the Zodiac. Okay, Sagittarius, November 22nd to December 21st. Um, Sagittarius is the archer, represented by the archer. They're a fire sign, and they're a mutable sign, which means they're adaptable, changeable, kind of um, going with the flow, moving around <laughs> place to place. Uh, their archetype is the gypsy, the student, and the philosopher. So Sagittarius's aim is really to expand their awareness through experience. They 
like to seek out unfamiliar experiences to learn and to grow. Um, they really want to find the ultimate meaning of life, which of course isn't easy and may never happen. So their whole life is kind of a constant exploration and adventure. Um, they really need to be open to foreign ways of thinking. And they can do this through any means. It could be books, it could be classes, it could be obviously travel and actually getting those um, experiences. Uh, so they can be adventurous, high-spirited, enthusiastic, and they're adaptable and also resilient. So even though they are free-spirited, it's kind of a contradiction because they also have a strong faith to their ideals, and that's often in the form of established things already, whether that's a religion or a church or um, a cultural or tradition. They really have our strong-held faith to something. Um, and they hold tight to that ideal. They really want to do the right thing. You know, they're very noble in that they want to do the right thing, no matter what that is to them. So it can mean obviously different things to different people. So some of their downfalls could be over optimism. So kind of too trusting and in going into things, um, thinking they're going to work out when maybe they don't. Um, they can also overextend themselves because they want to try and experience everything. Um, sometimes that can lead to bad judgment. Um, it could be hard for them to be in a long-term relationship just because they have a really strong need for freedom and the freedom to explore and have these adventures. So let's look at the chart. Um, so you can see she's the archer. She's got the bow and arrows behind her. And she's looks like she's ready to fight for her beliefs. <laughs> she's got the fiery border around her, which represents her as a fire sign. And let's see, we got, oh yeah, her hair. So if you notice, all the other patterns have their hair up in some style. But this is the only one, I think, where her hair is down and free-flowing, which I think represents her free spirit. Put that up close for you. And her, yeah, the sign of, or the glyph for Sagittarius is there. The arch looks like an archer bow and arrow, or an arrow. <laughs> so, next is Capricorn. Um, Capricorn is the sea goat, and the birth dates are December 22nd to January 19th. Uh, they're an earth sign, and they're another cardinal sign. So again, that initiating, take action type of sign. Their archetype is the hermit, the father, or the prime minister. So Scorpio can be known as the sign of power and status, but really their goal is to combine their own nature with the public identity. So it's not just out there for the sake of being out there. They really want to combine their own um inner world with that outer world. So really they're the symbol of integrity and they need to learn not to be swayed by the crowd, what the, or, you know, what society wants them to do or thinks they should do or what, you know, just kind of climbing up power just because they can or they feel like they should. Um, really they have to look inward to see what it is they want to accomplish. So Solitude actually can be really helpful for Capricorn to just be in touch with themselves and what it is they actually want and what's important to them. And to also prevent getting too power hungry. <laughs> um, they have a need to climb and reach their ambitions, but they have to, again, make sure that it's something that comes from within rather than just kind of climbing the corporate ladder and seeking power. So the strengths of Capricorn is their very patient. They wait to get what they want. They work to get what they want. They're very self-disciplined, determined. They're also very practical. So their behavior tends to reflect their intentions rather than their emotions. So this is the total opposite of Scorpio, right? So they tend, Scorpio tends to follow their feelings versus their reason and Capricorn follows their intentions versus their feelings. Um, they often get what they want because they're able to put that discipline and focus into 
what they're after instead of just being swayed by the emotions of the moment. Um, so fantasy isn't really their thing, although they can have dreams and fantasies as long as they can make it into a reality. And then they do. <laughs> they really have that iron will of all the signs. But their downfall can be that if they don't find what's important and meaningful to them, um, and they, or they don't actually make something in the outside world, then it can turn, it has to go somewhere, that drive. So it can turn either inward where they're shutting off their own emotions and feelings, and that can make them kind of hard or icy, um, hard to really get through to emotionally. Or they could use that control to control others around them. So they could turn very controlling towards family or coworkers, etc. So that's one thing they got to be careful of and really seek to make their reality, their, their, um, their own important things to them, a reality in the outside world. So that kind of weird. <laughs> um, or, you know, another way it could turn into is they could be a workaholic where they're working, 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 but they're never satisfied, never kind of reaching that end point. So let's look at the chart. Oh, I forgot to show you the chart. Did, did I? I don't know. Um, maybe, I, no, I did. <laughs> yeah. So Capricorn, so you can see the, the goat, sea goat um horns there on her she looks very kind of stately and put together and just kind of like oh i'm i'm out there for the crowd look at me um working for what i want so she looks very determined and she's also kind of holding on to jewels i think maybe her necklace so kind of um showing off the rewards of what she's earned and worked for uh, she also has her hands to up to her chest and maybe that could be reminding her to look within versus just um, climbing for the sake of what society thinks she should do or for that power or outside power. So, yep, that is Capricorn. All right, Aquarius is next. And the dates for Aquarius are January 20th to February 18th. And yeah, this is the first of the darker skin tones, which I really love that they have charted it like that. Um, so the water bearer is the sign or is the um, symbol for Aquarius. They're even though they're an air sign, it's you know known as the water bearer, but they are an air sign. And they're also a fixed sign, like Scorpio, so they have a strong focus, they're steadfast, and they hold tight to, we'll get into that, what they hold tight to, but, so very steadfast and loyal. The archetypes are the genius, the revolutionary, the truthsayer, the scientist, and the exile. So... The glyph, a lot of people, which I'll show you here, where is it? Mm, do they have it in this one? Oh yeah, I think it's on her arm. So you can hardly see it, but on that, it looks like kind of a bracelet, but it's um the symbol or the glyph for Aquarius. And it's like two squiggly lines like that, which a lot of people think, or I thought even was water because they're the water bearer, but actually, it turns out those represent serpents, which represent knowledge. So interesting. But yeah, Scorpio, I mean, Scorpio. sorry guys, I'm a little all over the place today. Aquarius, um, their end point is freedom, individuality, and holding to truth. They're really seeking the truth. Um, they really dance to their own drum and it can really kill their spirit if they're not doing that, if they're not true to themselves. Um, now it's similar in that way to Sagittarius, that freedom is very important to them and um, seeking that freedom. But the difference between Sagittarius and Aquarius is that for Sagittarius, it's more based in what's already established. Um, their beliefs are kind of in what's already here in the world, whereas Aquarius is more, they're seeking 
a truth that's kind of higher than what's already here. So something beyond, something out of the box. And that's what they're searching for. That's their kind of freedom. Out of society, really. Whereas Sagittarius is very much within society. So let's see. For most of us, you know, going with the traditions and customs of society is helpful and comforting. But that's like a death sentence for Aquarius. Uh, they really feel a lot of pressure to conform and they can seem cold-hearted or standoffish when they aren't really. They just often, to be true to themselves, often they have to disappoint people around them who are expecting something else. So their strengths are that they see the truth, they think in ways that we're not taught to think, which makes them the genius. Um, they really can think out of the box and they can be really stubborn in the fight for truth. Um, so the downfall can be that that stubbornness could be misapplied. So if they're not really um, seeking for a higher truth or something that's really important to society or um, the outside world, then it can really turn inward and they can develop um, what seems like individuality in dressing a certain way or listening to certain music or only doing things a set way. So it can really turn into this stubborn quirkiness that doesn't really have much meaning um, instead of true individuality, which is holding true to their own beliefs and values. So they can feel like an outsider. They can feel um, alienated, uh, especially if they're kind of going with the flow of what people expect of them. Then they can feel like they're just acting in their own life. They're not really there. They're just kind of going through the motions, but their spirit is kind of somewhere else. Okay, so the chart... So we can see that she looks different from the other charts, not in just her skin tone, but more in, you know, she's got like this big thing on her head and she's in water. So she does look different in that way from the other signs. And, you know, like I said, they can feel alienated and her face really has kind of an alien-esque look to it. Um, she's in submerged in water, but she's breaking out. Like she's kind of like coming out of the water. Um, which is kind of, I think it's the continuation of water on her head <laughs> that she's breaking out of, whereas, you know, water kind of goes in the flow and it's all combined together, but she's kind of breaking out of that flow and forging her own way. Uh, let's see. So it looks like she's closing her eyes and holding her chest, which could be like she's holding true to her ideals and what she believes in to the point of even shutting others out. And yeah, I think that's all. Um, the water also could represent that she's the water bearer and her, yeah, like I said, she's got the sign for it on her arm. So yeah, Aquarius. And that takes us to the final sign of the Zodiac. We made it <laughs> to Pisces. And here is Pisces. Oh, I forgot to mention too, my daughter's a Pisces. So another one in the end of the Zodiac. And Pisces is represented by the fishes. And the birth dates are February 19th to March 20th. So in the depths of winter now. The end of winter. And the they're a water sign. They're mutable, which again, just like Sagittarius, they're adaptable and changeable and go with the flow. The archetype is the mystic, the dreamer, the poet, and the, I don't know, it said in the, this book, the face dancer, which I don't really know what that means. <laughs> so just like the final depths of winter, this is the final sign symbolizing just a dissolving back to where we came from and our essence to start the cycle all over again. So the ocean, they're a very oceany water sign and um, the ocean kind of represents something where we all came from and something that connects us all. Um, things kind of dissolve into the ocean. And it also is a symbol of consciousness itself, which is very Piscean. <laughs> so when you think back to my other video, Gemini was all about observing the world directly. So for Pi uh, Pisces, they observe 
the mind observing the world. <laughs> so very kind of Buddhist or meditative quality because, you know, in meditation you're observing from a distance your own consciousness. And that's kind of what Pisces is all about or aiming to do. So they tend to be about a lot of subjective, subjectivity versus objectivity. And they can do this a lot through meditation. Um, and experiencing consciousness is really a good way for um, Pisces to let go. Because the goal, the end goal of Pisces is to just let go and let it just basically observe things for as they are. So it is kind of like a very um, enlightened state, if you want to say that. Like they're almost aiming for enlightenment in a way. Um, oh yeah, my arm's getting tired of holding this up too long. Um, so their strengths are imagination, empathy, gentleness, and they are instinctively aware of higher levels of consciousness. Now their downfall can be really escapism because they can get so overwhelmed by just all the flow of feelings and things in the world, um, all sorts of impressions that they can feel the need like it's too much and they need to check out and escape. And because they have such a great imagination, it's easy for them to do this. So you can think of it as numbing. They sometimes if it's too much for them, they can have a need to numb or self-medicate. And that could be in any way, like it could be for some, it's, you know, drugs and alcohol, but for others, it could be even escape into books, escape into movies or TV, um, even sleep and dreams, um, daydreams that don't really lead anywhere or just kind of cut them off from the world. Even though imagination and daydreaming is really important and a good thing for Pisces, if it's so much so that it's like just shutting out the outer world, that's not so good. So, and music is important for Pisces, but again, if they become so lost in music that it's, it becomes more their reality than the outer world, then that can be more of a form of escape. So in the chart, obviously very oceany looking colors, and we have the fishes, fishes, and that's the glyph for Pisces. And even her eyes are blue, like the ocean blue. But yeah, look at her posture. It's very, it's almost like she's meditating right there. It's a very meditative kind of pose. But yeah, I don't have too much about this chart because it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, and maybe, you know, like she has, oh no, I thought, okay, never mind. <laughs> so yeah, that is Pisces. We finally reached the end. So I'm sorry again, that was not quite as <laughs> organized as my last one, but I just wanted to get them done and out there. So um, it wasn't going to take me a year. <laughs> so I hope you guys thought this was fun and enjoyed it. Uh, I will do a regular update soon. If I have time, I might even film it right after this. We'll see. So yeah, I'm going to have, I want to eventually stitch all of these, but that's going to take me a while. Uh, I am on Scorpio now and then I'll go to probably Pisces next since that's my daughter's sign So yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and chatting with me today <laughs> um, Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye